Amen. Well, thank you all for being here tonight, and I want to firstly thank Pastor for this opportunity. It's Men's preaching nights are fun, but this is much more fun. The biggest reason is you get to wear the lapel mic. Just kidding. Because um, I'm a walker, so if you see me walking all around, um, that's what I'm doing. But the title of my sermon this evening is In View of the Eternal. In View of the Eternal. And this is going to tie into uh, Brother Garrett's sermon from Sunday night. I wrote my sermon before it, but it's funny just how God will work things together like that. So, you're there in James 4. I just want to read one verse from James 4. And really the topic, I came up with this topic. It, it came up in a dinner conversation that I had and recently. Um, and I contemplated it um, frequently when I was in the Philippines, just because being there and all, doing all the soul winning and stuff, it's kind of something you think about. Like when you view your life from an eternal perspective. And when you look at your life, it's often easy, especially coming on a midweek service on a Wednesday, it's often easy to only focus on the things that are here and now, the problems that you've got in your week, what you got to do at work tomorrow, what you're going to eat for dinner when you go home. Um, but we need to view our lives at an eternal, from an eternal perspective because that will change how we live. When you view your life from the eternal perspective, the full long term, not just uh, the long term of a couple years, the long term of eternity. So that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. And James 4, just look down at verse 14. James 4, 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. This is really something, a verse that gets you thinking when you realize our life is but a vapor. Our life is so short on this earth, and we only have so much time. And, and kind of tying into Brother Garrett's sermon from Sunday night, you've already packed your backpack, okay? We're, this sermon is, you've already packed your backpack, you already know what you're doing, but where are you going with it? And what's the right perspective and attitude and view of life to have? And all the decisions you make in life have to be filtered through, through this, through viewing the eternal. So uh, turn, if you would, to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. So my first point, and really this could be a one-point sermon, but I made it three points because that's what you're supposed to do when you write a sermon is make it three points. Um, but the first point is perspective. The first point is perspective. You need to view the eternal as more valuable than the present. And when I say the eternal, I mean heaven and the things of God that influence eternity, that influence, um, that influence eternity, that influence uh, your spot in heaven. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about rewards in heaven and all the things you do after you're saved. So uh, we read James 4.14. Look down. Actually, I'm going to read for you Colossians 4 before we get to Luke. Colossians uh, 3.2 says, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. And this is a great verse talking about not being tied up in the things that are on this earth. Again, this really could be a one-point sermon about focusing on the eternal, not focusing on the things of this earth. And because we need to view the eternal as more important. You first, the only way you're going to live a life where you're serving God 100%, where you're going places and doing things that God wants you to do, is if you're viewing the eternal as more important than the present. Because if you're stuck in the present, if you're stuck in this is my job and this is my family and this is my you know, this place I grew up in or whatever, you're going to be stuck there and you're limiting your, your impact that you could have on your eternity and on the the eternal destiny of, of many other souls. And we only have a short, a short time to impact this. Look at, look at Luke 19 in verse 15. Luke 19, 15 says, And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, this is a parable Jesus is giving, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little thing, have thou authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. So what this is really teaching us, and obviously this is just a parable, but this is reiterated multiple times throughout the New Testament. We're going to go to a couple different places, but what you do on this earth, the things you do for God on this earth, determine your position in author and authority and responsibility in heaven, in the millennial reign, in eternity. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want you to gain from this is the servant that gained 10 pounds is over 10 cities. The servant get, that gained 5 pounds is over 5 cities. You don't want to be the servant that gained 1 pound and is over 1 city. 
although that's still amazing because you'll still be in heaven, you'll still be serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to have an eternal impact. And the only way you do that is having the right perspective, having an eternal perspective. You're not just accidentally going to be going through your life, living for the world, and suddenly you're going to be like, oh, I've got all these heavenly rewards. It doesn't work like that. You have to be focused. And, it, I mean, in Matthew it says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have to be faithful. You need to be doing this day in, day out, decade after decade. A lot of people say, you know, the Christian life is not measured in years. It's, it's measured in decades. Because it's the same thing. If you're trying to grow a, a bank account or you're trying to grow some stocks or something like that, using a, a worldly illustration, right? If you're trying to grow some, you know, financial investment or something, it doesn't double. It doesn't, you don't get your investment back after one year. You don't get it back after two years or even 10 years. You get it back after 40 years, 50 years your retirement, whatever it is. It's the same way with God. You're not going to see the immediate results. You're not just going to bank your entire eternity you know, in one year, in five years. You're going to do it over the course of decades or however long you, you have on this earth. And God wants you to produce for him. And the more you produce, the more he rewards you, the more responsibility and um, rewards that you get in heaven. Hence, the servant that did more, the servant that gained 10 pounds, is given 10 cities. And the servant that's given gained five pounds is given five cities. Um, God's always very, very fair how he works like that. So turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is another passage about this, talking about how what we do on this earth affects eternity. And this is all the, the buildup, right? This is about changing your perspective. You have to realize that what you do right now affects not just your life and the blessings and chastisement that you receive from God in this life, how you sow, how you reap, it affects eternity, it affects heaven, it affects your position for eternity. And that's a hard concept for us as humans to grasp because we're stuck in such a, a micro, um, you know, such a small time frame of our lives. Especially if you're young, it's even harder. You know, when you're 16, all you can think about is being 18. And then when you're 18, all you can think about is being 20. And then when you're 20, who knows, you know, but it's, it's all these short increments. You're, we're very stuck in these short time frames. When you realize your life is just this little blip in the timeline of the entire earth that God created us on here, and then eternity is forever in the future. We can't totally grasp that concept, but if you get close, if you start realizing, okay, instead of, you know, you know w what you do now, the few years that you have on this earth now, 80, 90, 100 years, well, however long you live or however long you're saved for and serving God, that impacts eternity. That impacts forever. That has a lot of power. What you do on this earth has a lot of power because it's impacting eternity. And carnal things, the things of this world, the things all around us are temporal and they have no eternal value. Look at 1 Corinthians 3 in verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon that foundation, talking about works after you're saved, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, excuse me, for, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, verse 14, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. A reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So notice how it says gold, silver, precious stone, back in verse 12, wood, hay, stubble. Okay, this is, I love when God contrasts stuff for us because it makes it so, a lot easier for us to see the differences. He's contrasting, look, if you build upon the foundation, once you're saved and you have Jesus Christ as your foundation, if you build on that gold, silver, precious stones, you're building things of eternal value that make it through the fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Those are the things that make it through the fire. Those are the things that have eternal value contrasting that with the person who gets saved and then they live their life for worldly things, for carnal things, and they build wood, hay, and stubble. Now, there's a place for wood, hay, and stubble, right? We need, we need wood for different things in our life. We need stubble and, and these different things, but they have no eternal value is what, what uh, Paul is, is and the Bible is showing us here. So we want to, to the most that we can, or, or you know, to the, the maximum that we're able, we want to 
live our life and produce and, and, and build gold, silver, precious stones. Because then you don't lose that at the judgment seat of Christ. You don't lose the wood, hay, and stubble. Now, our lives are going to have wood, hay, and stubble. We all, you know, as men, you've got jobs, different, you know, things are just wood, hay, and stubble. And you can't control that. You know, doing your taxes is wood, hay, and stubble. But we all got to do our taxes, you know. It's, that's wood, hay, and stubble. You don't get any reward for that. You, but you got to do it, you know, to, to have a, you know, life on this earth where you're not stuck in some prison somewhere. But um, you want to have the gold, silver, precious stones. You want to build the eternal things, like being in church on a Wednesday night. And I'm going to get to get to some of that later. But this is really just to focus your perspective and help you realize, I want you to see that what you do on this earth is super important. It matters because it impacts eternity, because it impacts the rewards and, the, and what you have through eternity, what you have in heaven. And we'll all stand at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, you don't have to turn there, I'll just read it for you. It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Again, the contrast. Are you going to live for God? Are you going to focus on the eternal things, the things that have spiritual value, the gold, silver, precious stones? Or are you going to focus on the wood, hay, and stubble? and waste your life, so to speak. When you're going to get to heaven, right, where we were, if look down at 1 Corinthians 3 again. Um, it says in verse 15, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So you still go to heaven. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're living your life for God or you're living your life for the world, but it says you'll suffer loss because everything you did on this life will be wasted or much of it if you live for the world, if you live for all the carnal things. If you build the wood, hay, and stubble, you're going to lose it all. You might enjoy this life. You might enjoy the time on this earth. You might have a nicer house or a better car or whatever it is, but you're going to lose it. You're going to suffer loss. So we need to change our perspective. We need to focus on the eternal. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. So just to recap your perspective, we're talking about your life in view of the eternal. Your perspective needs to view the eternal as more valuable than the present because carnal things are temporal and will vanish away. I'm not saying you can't have them or you shouldn't do them. Or you, we'll all have some wood, hay, and stubble, but you want to focus on the gold, silver, precious stones, the things that have eternal value. So you have to change your perspective. Number two, you have to change your pursuits. You have to change your pursuits. You need to dedicate your time and resources towards things that influence eternal, towards building that gold, silver, and precious stone. And again, you know, this all ties together. It all ties together because, like I said, earthly pursuits are fine. We're all going to have the wood, hay, and stubble, but they're lost value. They're lost value to you, but they're also lost value to the kingdom of, of heaven because that's time, that's money, that's effort that you're not spending serving God. You're spending it over here doing whatever worldly things of no value. Whether, you, whether it's something you need to do, like going to your job or, you know, cooking, whatever, but it's not something of eternal value. Versus over here, you're soul winning, you're going to church, you're maximizing, you're maximizing your gold, silver, precious stones. That's what you want to do, both because it benefits you, it benefits your eternity, but it benefits the kingdom of God. Look down at Matthew 6. There's so many, so many good passages here in Matthew 6. We're just going to read a little bit of it. Look at Matthew 6 and verse 19. Matthew 6, 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. I love these verses. These were always very applicable growing up in the Northeast, where they salt the roads, and everything rusts. Your car rusts. Your, everything rusts. In California, maybe the thief part is more applicable to us <laughs> if, you live in, if you live in somewhere like the Bay Area. But regardless, that wood, hay, stubble, all those worldly things, they all rust. They all corrupt. They're all burned up in the end. The eternal things don't. They never waste away. It's, it's, it's like a piggy bank in heaven where thieves do not break through nor steal. Let's keep reading in verse 21. It says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be evil, uh, be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, 
how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. So what is what's Jesus saying here? He's saying you can't do both. You can't focus all of your energy and your life on the wood, hay, and stubble. You can't focus it all on the carnal things and on him and on God and on the eternal things. Why? Look down at verse 21 again. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Because God knows your heart. I don't know your heart. Nobody, none of us humans can see each other's hearts. But God knows where your heart is at. And if your heart is after the things of this world, if it's after, you know, pursuing that next promotion, pursuing that next career, that next house, bigger house, next car, faster car, whatever the thing is, and it's not on God, your heart isn't set on the things of God, God knows that. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So it works both ways. It works both ways. God knows where your heart is at based on where you're spending your time, where you're spending your money, where you're spending all your, your, your resources. And look at verse, uh, the end of verse 24, where it says, you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't do both. You can't try and please the world. You can't try and have, you know, desire the things of the world and desire the things of God. Okay, just as an example, I, um, back when I lived in Vermont, I had a Jeep. Some of you have seen it, um, pictures of it. But that was me, I, kind of an impulse Friday afternoon purchase. I'd saved all my money from working for the summer, and I, I buy this Jeep, right? And I'm just out having fun with it and doing all this stuff while I'm getting sucked into the wood, hay, and stubble direction. And then I realize, uh, my grades in school aren't as good as they should be. They've gone down. Oh, I'm not going so many twice a week. I'm going so many once a week. Maybe I'm missing a week here and there. And I realize that's sucking me away. That's sucking me away from the things that have eternal value, the things that I should be focused on. And what value is it bringing my life in the long run? Some fun? It's not worth it. So I sold it. But sometimes you get stuck in that, in that you know, uh, negative feedback loop with things in your life for longer. Um, but you're wasting your time. You're wasting your talents. You're wasting your money. And you're losing out on rewards when you're focused on pursuing the things of the world, when you are focused on those things. I'm not saying you can't have them, but when that's what your heart desires, that's when it's wrong. That's when God has a problem with it. Let's read more of, of Matthew 6. Look down at verse 25. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, that your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things, notice, do the Gentiles seek? This is what everyone in the world is worried about. They're worried about, well, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to be clothed with? Now, in America, it's more like, oh, what is so-and-so saying on social media? Oh, what am I going to do, you know, on this next vacation or whatever? Like, it's ne less of the necessities, more of the, the pleasures of life. But it's the same thing. That's what everyone in the world is worried about. They're all worried about, you know, what they're doing at their job and all these different things. And some of those things I'm sure you're worrying about, we all have worries like that. But notice what, notice what Jesus says um, at uh, verse 32. It says, For your heavenly Father knoweth, that ye have need of all these things, all these things that you're worried about. God knows that you are worrying about them. He knows that you have them. Verse 33, notice, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the day of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So look at verse 33. I mean, you've all heard it before, right? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What's Jesus saying? He's saying, seek the kingdom of God first. Seek eternal things first. 
Put the things of God first in your life. Don't spend all your time and all your energy worrying about all the things of this world that you have to worry about. And look what it says. All these things shall be added unto you. God will take care of all the worries in your life. And this is something that, that I realized uh, um, when I came to California too. The only way God will give you the worldly things, the earthly life, uh, the earthly things, the carnal things in your life that you desire, the things you really want, you really want, you know, the next bigger house, you want the better car, whatever it is. Those are the only two illustrations I can come up with right now for some reason. Um, whatever it is carnally that you want, that you're desiring, the only way God is going to give you those things is when you stop seeking them. When you stop desiring them, when you start desiring Him and seeking God, because then you don't care. Because he doesn't want your heart to be set on the things of the world. And that's how God protects your heart, by not giving you those things. So if you're just like, why isn't God giving me these things? You know, I want, I need this. No, you need to seek him. You need to follow him. You need to put your time and your energy and your focus on things that have eternal value, on the things of God, not on the things of this world. Notice it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know, you need to desire and, and work and put your effort into the things that have eternal value. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Don't worry, I'm not just talking in vaguely here. Um, don't pursue and love the things of this world because they all vanish away. And if you are just stuck on desiring something in this world, some carnal thing, and you're hanging on to that, you're never going to get it because God will only give it to you when you stop desiring it. That is the only way for your heart to not be set on those things of the world. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. You'll find your heart where your time and your money is. I, I think this is some quote from, from Andrew Carnegie or somebody like that, um, where it's like, if you show me a man um, where he spends his money, I'll show you where his heart is. Or maybe I'm not paraphrasing it right, but... Um, it, where you're spending your time, because time is money, if you, where you're spending your time, where you're spending your money, that's where your heart's going to be. So if you're not tithing because you say, oh, well, I, I got to save for that next house, I got to save for that next vacation or that next whatever you're desiring, your heart's over here right. in the world. It's not over here with God, right? If you're spending all your time, if you're missing church just because you're like, I don't feel like it, or oh, I can work extra, or I can do this or whatever, God can give you much more than that. God can give you more than the couple hours of overtime you'd make skipping church. So where you're spending your time, where you're spending your money, that's where your heart is. So you need to be tithing. Not only is that a direct application, but spend your time and your energy. Focus on the things of God. Focus on the things that have eternal value. You're there in 1 John 2. I'm going to read you real quick Galatians 6, 7. You don't have to turn there. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We talked about that. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So it's saying, if you're sowing to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. And outside of the, the context of salvation, right? If you're sowing all the, the wood, hay, and stubble, you're going to reap corruption. It's all going to be burned up. You're going to lose it all. Versus if you're sowing in the Spirit, and you're walking in the Spirit, and you're laying up the gold, silver, and the precious stones, that's going to endure. Look at 1 John 2, 15. 1 John chapter 2, and verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Notice another great verse, 1 John 2, 15, where it says, Love not the world. I mean, we could end there. Where it's just like, don't love all this stuff. Don't love the things of this world. Don't, don't desire it. If you give that up, if you stop desiring and focusing on all the things of the world, your life will get infinitely easier because you won't be constantly fighting God because you'll be like, I want this God, and God will be like, I can't give that to you. It's going to ruin your life. It's, you're going to get out of church and do all this bad stuff. It will make your life so much easier if you just let go of the things of the world and you realize as a Christian, especially one in a church like this, 
you're not going to have all the things that your friends have. You're not going to have all the things that the world has. You know, you're not going to live in as big a house necessarily. You won't drive as nice a car necessarily. You won't go on as many vacations. If you're seeking all of that, God's not going to give it to you. And then look at verse 17. It says, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. All the things you want, all this new car, this fancy thing, whatever, it's all going to be gone. Even in a couple years, our society moves so fast. Like, you buy a new car now before you even paid it off. There's a new one. And then that's why leasing, that's why everybody leases now. Because it's like, oh, then I could just get the new one and the new one and the new one. And you're, all, you're wasting all of that. No eternal value. Now, we all need a car. At least in California, it's a good thing to have. But don't put your heart on that. Don't desire and say, well, I want this specific one. And it has to be this and this. Don't focus on those things. Because everything in this world will one day burn up. It's got no eternal value. Turn to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. So we're talking about your pursuits. So we talked about perspective where you need to view the eternal as more valuable than the present. Why? Because the things you do in the present affect your eternal, your eternal rewards. And then pursuits, we talked about you need to dedicate your time, your resources towards influencing the eternal, not only on the carnal. I get it. We all have to have some wood, uh, some wood hay, and stubble in our lives. But you want to focus on the eternal things. You want to focus on the things that have eternal value. And this third point now is people. So you've got perspective, pursuits, people. So I alliterated it, too. <laughs> but um, people, you need to focus on eternal souls because that will have the greatest value. That has the greatest impact, right? We've talked about how it affects your life. We've talked about how it affects your rewards in heaven by focusing on spiritual things, on eternal things, on your Bible reading, on soul winning, on church, those sort of things, as opposed to the things of this world. But how does it affect others? This is by far the, the greatest impact that you can have. So look at Mark 4. Look down at Mark chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So this is the parable of the sower that Jesus is teaching. Um, and he's teaching that, you know, some people, they hear the word, they, you know, they receive it, they get saved, but then notice, the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. These are the Christians, these are the people who... All they care about are the things of this world, the things that they can see now, the things that they can buy, the things that they can, you know, carnally look at and possess. And notice it says, and it becometh unfruitful. That is such a shame. Does it not just kill you when you see someone get out of church and stop soul winning and stop serving God and you realize they're wasting their life because they're losing and they're these, oh, everything of eternal value and they're becoming unfruitful? Yeah. But Why? They're saved. They're going to go to heaven. Why is it so bad? Because they're hurting everyone else who's yeah. not saved. Right, right. They're losing all the souls that they could be winning might not get reached. Yeah. All the people, all the impact and the things they could do for God, they're not doing because they're unfruitful, because they're carnal. What are some examples of this? There are tons of examples of this in the Bible. Lot. Lot, is just, he's, Lot has got to be one of the most pathetic Bible characters to me. Right? You've got Abraham as your uncle, right? And you move with Abraham, you move from Ur of the Chaldees, and then you move all the way to, um, to Canaan land, and you're there where God wants you to be, and suddenly it's like, well, I see the well-watered plains of Sodom. Why? Because you've got lots of cows. And it's like, okay, money. That's what Lot saw. That's why he went to Sodom. And he went from being in the plain to being in the gate of Sodom to living inside Sodom. It just sucked him in. The world sucked him in. The money sucked him in. The lust sucked him in. And what happened then? Completely destroyed his life. Yeah. What did he do? His family completely destroyed. I mean, his wife was so stuck in this worldly mentality that she turned into a pillar of salt because she couldn't even, she had to look back. She couldn't even, she couldn't even give up any of it when they realized it was all going to be destroyed. When God destroyed Sodom, his Lot's wife couldn't even fathom that. She looked back. She couldn't give any of it up. Same thing with Lot. Don't be unfruitful. Don't become carnal. You have to realize when you get backslidden, when you get out of the Christian life, you're not only destroying 
the potential inheritance and potential you know, spiritual blessings and rewards that you could have, you're destroying other people's chances to get saved. Right. You're destroying everyone else around you. You're destroying their Christian lives too, yep. whether you know it or not. Right. And another thing, you notice the false prophets, they never preach on, on the eternal things. They're always talking about your life now, how to live your best life now, right? They're focused on all the carnal things. They're focused on all the carnal things. But it, it's just so sad. It's so sad when you see a Christian who's doing all the right things. They're in a church like this, or they're in another independent Baptist church, and they're soul winning, and they're, you know, on fire for God, and then they just completely throw that away. You know, they throw away their Christian life. They throw away their testimony. Why? Because some little care of the world sucked them in. Ah, oh, I could get a better job, and I could move here. It doesn't matter that there's not a good church in this city. Is that worth it? might be on this earth, but is it going to be worth it in the long run that we're talking about? No. Not only are you, is that person giving up all of their eternal rewards and, and potential, but all the people around them who either would get saved if they preached them the gospel, you know, their kids, their family, their siblings, all these other people who they influence, they're hurting those people's chances. They're hurting, hurting those people's right, yeah. potential for eternal you know, rewards, and also the chance to get saved. And that's just, that's just the worst thing. But let's keep reading in Mark 4. That was the negative, right? So you've got the people who just get sucked into the world. They just get sucked into the cares of this world, and they become unfruitful, and they're worthless to God. Why, what, what is, why does God have any, why would God want to answer their prayers or help them in, you know, their time of trouble when they've just, you know, completely just ditched, God's commandments and basically said, no, I don't want to live for you, God. I'm going to go do all the things of the world, even though I know it's wrong. You know, who's, some Christian who's sat under preaching, they know it. They've read their Bible through cover to cover, and they just ditch out all the things of God, and they're just go whole hog into the things of the world. Why? What is God thinking? Like, he must be so disappointed in these people. Like, I don't want to be one of those people. Like, <laughs> that is, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You better be scared out of your chair if you think that you can sit in a church like this and go out and live like the world and God's not going to, you know, chastise you. Yeah, don't become unfruitful. Don't become carnal. It's the biggest waste of your life. It's the biggest waste. You might as well have just gotten saved and died the next day because you're hurting other people. You're hurting other people by rejecting, by getting rid of your Christian life and going into all the sins of the world. Um, but enough of that. Let's, let's go to the positive now in, in Mark 4. Back in Mark 4, look at verse 20. It says, And these are they which are sown in good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. So these are the good Christians. This is everyone who gets saved. They hear the word of God. They receive it. They get in church. And notice they get soul winning, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundredfold. So these bring forth fruit. This is directly talking about soul winning. And soul winning is by far, you know, based on what Jesus explains in the Bible and everything that we know, by far the thing that has the greatest spiritual impact. Why? Because it's not just impacting you and giving you rewards in eternity. You're changing the destiny of an eternal soul, someone else. All the money that you make an entire year doesn't come close to the value of one soul. It'd be better to go soul winning and not have a job and, and not make any money. That The trade-off isn't even, we can't even equate the two. They're not even close to being equal. But a lot of people think, well, you know, I can do all these things in the world. And this is not that important because they're not seeing the eternal. Back to point one, perspective. You need to view the eternal as more important. You need to view not just your eternal rewards, but everyone around you, their soul, everyone who's not saved, their eternal soul, better, that better be more important to you. Winning them, winning your lost neighbor, winning the people in Fresno you've never even met. That should be more important to you than the things of this world, because it has such a greater impact. And we're, we're rewarded um, for time, but also for results, also for the, the number of souls we get. That's what I love about Fresno. It's so receptive here. It's the best soul winning I've done in this country, um, whether East Coast, Texas, West Coast. It's amazing. Like, we go out on a Sunday, this you know, relatively small church, and we can have 10 people saved. You know, that's amazing. And God sees that. And the soul winning that you do 
all the energy and effort you put in to your Bible reading and coming to church, but especially soul winning, that shows God how profitable you are. That shows, shows God the value that you're creating, not just in your own Christian life, in your own you know, eternal bank account, so to speak, but it shows how profitable you are for the kingdom of God. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, right? God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And every time a carnal Christian goes into sin, bah, and stops soul winning, and get just their testimony falls apart, that upsets God, or it would upset me at least, that, that because that's someone who's no longer bringing any value to the kingdom of heaven. That's why soul winning is the most important thing, 100% the most important thing. So in conclusion, go to Matthew 10 if you would. It's a long conclusion, though, so don't get your hopes up. Not yet. <laughs> Matthew 10. What do we learn? Well, perspective. You need to change your perspective. It's easy to get caught up in the things of this world, but you need to have the perspective that the eternal is more important than the present and that you know, doing things of eternal value is more important than doing things that you know, are carnal that will vanish away. Pursuits, you have to dedicate your time, your resources towards the things of God, towards soul winning, towards serving God and doing things of eternal value rather than spending all your time focusing on the next thing you can buy or the next, you know, whatever thing you want or your flesh wants. And then people, you need to focus on eternal souls. Why? We just talked about it. They have the greatest value, both for your eternal reward, but also that soul, that person you talk to at the door. That's worth more than anything that we all possess earthly speaking. And in conclusion, this is a big one. You need to be willing to forsake all and pursue things of eternal value in your life. This is an easy one to talk about, but it's not super easy to, it's not a super easy point to kind of actually realize. And I, I've prayed this before. I've prayed that I never want to be too comfortable in my life to where if God calls me or, or sends me somewhere else or there's somewhere I can go where I can have a bigger eternal impact. I never want to be too comfortable where I don't go because something of the world is holding me there. Whether it's my job. I just can't leave. I've got such a good job. I can't leave. You know, I've lived in this, this, on this farm or my house or wherever my entire life. I can't leave. I never want to get caught in that because when you're caught in that, you're limiting yourself because you're limiting because you're being constrained by something of the world. And this kind of came into light when, when I was in the Philippines. And I remember it was one of the hotels we stayed in. And I'm there, and it's this tiny bathroom. I'm trying to take a shower. There's no shower curtain, so the shower just sprays the entire bathroom. And there's no toilet paper. And I'm like, what is this place? Like, I, I was just getting upset. Like, I was getting upset in my mind. And I'm just like, how do, how do you live here? I'm like, what? There's no toilet paper. But <laughs> what you had to... I thought about that, but then I thought, well, what about all the soul winning here? And then when you compare that and you say, okay, I'm giving up some things of the world. You're giving up some things of the world. The people living there are lacking compared to our standard and what we have in this church, in this country. But the soul winning, the souls that are available, the receptiveness, you, that's, those are the kind of places where you can become a spiritual millionaire, so to speak, because there's so much potential. There's so many souls that need saving. You can go and save as many as you want. It's all about the time you invest. And we've got a good here in Fresno compared to the rest of the country, but it's another level when you're on a country, when you're in a country like the Philippines. And you, all of you that have been to missions trips know what I'm talking about. And it's like, you might be living in a little hut or a cottage, so to speak. You know, you're not going to have a car, you're not going to have somewhere nice to, to stay, but the people that go there and the people that give things up, the missionaries that go, huge respect for them because they're giving up all the things of the world, all the things that us and, and everyone else is kind of seeking after. You know, all the possessions, the house, the job. When you give that up and you go to someplace like that, it's all of eternal value. Because the only way to turn physical things that you own into something of eternal value, right? There's the saying, you can't take it with you, right? Paul says it. I brought nothing into this world and it's certain I can carry nothing out. 
It's not like you can take your car. It's not like you can take your clothes or your shoes or all whatever your favorite possession is. You can't take that to heaven. But what can you do? You can take it as a reward. How? The only way is by giving it up. The only way is by giving it up. You don't get any reward for having it on this earth. You don't get a reward for how much stuff you accumulate. It's not a contest of how rich we can get here. You know, gain isn't godliness, as the Bible says. But when you give those things up as the disciples, it says in Luke 5, oh, actually, let's read Matthew 10, where I had you turn. You're there in Matthew 10. Look at verse 39. It says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. This is the person who's, you know, seeking all the things. They're trying to have their life perfect on this earth. They're going to lose it because they're only focused on the, themselves and on carnal things. But, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. When you really let that sink in, it's basically saying when you lose your life, when you give up your life, when you, you know, forsake the things of this life, all the things that make you comfortable, all the things that make you happy, it doesn't matter if you lose friends, job, possessions, your earthly identity, right? Your, whether that's your career or, or whatever, when you give up all of those things, when you lose it all, for my sake, Jesus says, you find it. You don't find it here on this earth. You'll find it in heaven. You don't find it here on this earth. And there's so many examples of this. There's so many examples of this in the Bible. I mean, Hebrews 11, um, you can turn there if you like. Hebrews 11 is basically an entire chapter of dedicated to people who viewed the eternal as more important than the temporal, than this earth. And it's a chapter of, of, about people who gave things up. Moses gave up Egypt. The Bible says, here, let me go there. Oh, yeah, I'm here. In Hebrews 11, it says, um, verse 25, Hebrews 11, 25, it says about Moses esteeming the reproach, or choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches, not greater riches on this earth, Moses realized by giving that up, he's gaining eternal reward. Greater riches, the reproach of Christ is greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for your respect unto the recompense of the reward. Look at verse 16. Hebrews 11:16 16 says, But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. It's a beautiful verse, but I want to focus on um, the first part where it says, But they desire a better country. Because there are good things on this earth. There are good things, and you can enjoy a lot of blessings here, but none of it, none of it compares to heaven. And when you put and seek your, when you put the focus of your life and you seek the things of God, things that have eternal value, uh, it says it's a better country. And you can definitely, as America falls apart more, you can definitely see that. But this entire chapter, this entire chapter, by faith, all these people, Jacob, Moses, you know, um, David, Samuel, all these people in this chapter did these things, but it's all because they had the eternal in mind. None of them are stuck worrying about the next election or the next new car that comes out or the next anything. You can see I've got a problem with cars because that's like the only, <laughs> the only example I can give. But um, none of these people were stuck in the temporal. They're focused on the eternal. They're focused on a better country. And that's what I want to leave you with tonight is don't waste your eternity. Don't waste your time on this earth because this is all you have to affect your eternity. It's all the time you have to affect other people in this city, other family members, friends, coworkers. It's all the time you have to affect their eternity yep. by giving them the gospel, you know, by your, your, you know, your testimony and, and serving God and soul winning. And don't ever get too comfortable. Don't ever get too comfortable where you don't want to give something up for God. Where you say, well, God, I know you really want me to do something, but, I mean, look at Moses, right? If, you, if there's something in the world that you're hanging on to, if you tell God, no, I'm not, I can't do that, you know, I can't be a pastor, I can't, you know, do X, Y, and Z, look at Moses, right? Moses told God, I can't speak. God made him speak anyways, right? <laughs> you look at, there, there are multiple, multiple characters like that in the Bible. Don't get, don't let your heart be set in the things of this world. Don't get too comfortable. And always be on the lookout for eternal opportunities, for spiritual opportunities where you can advance the kingdom of God, where you can 
you know, grow your, you know, your rewards in eternity because we need to view our lives in, in view of the eternal. You have to have the right perspective, the right pursuits, and the right people. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this church. Thank you for your word. I pray that you'd help us all, Lord, to realize that the eternal is more important than the present, and the ev- but that everything we do on this earth.